Hi everybody, it's Dawn Colicchio from Remax Diamond Realtors right here in central New Jersey. Did you know that most people, when they decided to move out of mom and dad's house or they've decided that it's finally time to get a place of their own, feel like they only have two options and that is rent or buy? And then when they decide that they're going to buy, they feel like they only have two other options, which is a single family home or a community like a townhouse or condo. Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the third option that some people really don't consider and it has some really great benefits. So stay with me. So the third option is a multifamily property. Now today specifically, I'm going to talk about the benefits of a two family property because once you get to three units or four units or higher, there are different benefits to that and there are different rules and regulations. I always recommend sitting down with your mortgage professional so that they can go over all the details with you in person and make it property specific for you. In the meantime, if you're curious about mortgages, pre-approval and pre-qualification letters, you can click the link above to watch that video next. Purchasing a two family property, um, especially if you were going to consider living in a townhouse or a condo where you're gonna still live with people above you and below you and all the common areas are just that, common areas, is a really good alternative. I mean, you can purchase a two family home, you can live and owner occupy in one unit and basically have your tenants pay your mortgage for you doesn't sound too bad. First, let's talk down payment. If you were going to buy a two family property strictly as an investment property, meaning you were going to put two tenants in there and you weren't going to own or occupy, your down payment has to be 25% down. That's a lot of money to come up with. Now, if you decide to live and own or occupy one unit, your down payment, if you go conventional is 15% down. That's a nice savings. But here's the thing, if you decide to go owner occupied FHA, your down payment drops to three and a half percent down. I mean, do the math. If you're tight on a down payment, a two family owner occupied might be the way to go for you. Next, number two, let's talk interest rates. Interest rates are always going to be higher on an investment property. So if you're not gonna own or occupy your two family house, your interest rate is probably going to be at least 1% higher. The other thing that the lender is gonna require if you're not going to own or occupy the property is three to six months in reserves. They're gonna want mortgage payments, principal, interest, taxes, insurance in a liquid account. So a 401k doesn't count. It has to be liquid funds in an account in reserves, you know, in case it stays vacant for a while, they want to make sure they're going to get their mortgage payment. If you choose to own or occupy one of the units, then that goes out the window. Okay. So your interest rate is going to be lower and they're not going to require three to six months of reserves. So do you see how that could be a savings and also just helpful to make you be able to buy your first property. One other thing that is huge for a lot of my buyers, especially first time home buyers and young buyers is qualifying. A lot of buyers nowadays are starting out with a ton of student loans on their back. And when a mortgage rep sits down with you, they're basing what you can get approved for on your debt to income. And unfortunately, a student loan is a huge debt. And usually you have a car payment and other miscellaneous bills. So qualifying is a little bit different with a two family house if you're gonna own or occupy it. So when your lender is looking over your debt to income ratio, they're going to count that rent that you're gonna be collecting on that other unit you're not living in as income, which is huge. They're gonna take just 75% of fair market value. And that's what they're gonna use as income that they can use toward your pre-qualifying. So that could be the difference between actually qualifying to buy something and not qualifying. So that is definitely a bonus. One of the reasons why I love this option for certain buyers, if it fits your lifestyle, is that if you're somebody that down the road wants to own investment properties, if you want to have another stream of income besides your nine to five job, this is a great way to start out. So the goal is, 
as you have your tenant, hopefully paying all of your mortgage and you're socking away money and saving, when the time comes, you can purchase a single family home, keep this property as strictly an investment property, and now you'll be renting out two units. So you'll have two more streams of income. Now, I won't pretend that this is an option for everyone. I mean, number one, you have to be ready to be a landlord and you have to be okay with them calling you and saying, hey, our hot water heater's broken. I get it. You definitely have to be somebody cut out for this, but I just wanted to point it out because I think a lot of people overlook this option and I think it's really something to consider if you're brave enough to think outside the box. So listen, I hope this video was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm here every Wednesday and I would love for you to join me. Take care.